Welcome to our carol service online. My name is Paul Bolter, Vicar of St Paul's Caton and St Cuthbert's over Kellett. It's great to have you with us for our carol service today. It's going to be a service of readings, of carols and of prayers. And we're going to be hearing from some of the members of our congregation. As we begin, we're going to have a verse of scripture and then a prayer. So let's take a moment of quiet together. words became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Almighty God, as we prepare with joy to celebrate the gift of the Christ child, embrace the earth with your glory, and be for us a living hope in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Once in an old David's city stood a lonely cattle shed, where the later baby in a manger for his bed The reading is taken from Isaiah chapter 9 verses 2 to 7. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice. Then dive then when dividing the plunder for as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be a destiny for burning. It will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and, and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing it and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on 
and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. This is the word of the Lord. to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. God our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our Saviour, you were born in poverty and laid in a manger. Forgive our greed and rejection of your ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And so may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins that you may behold the glory of his son the word made flesh 
Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender. Luke chapter 2 verses 1 to 20. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. The census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria, so all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is a born to you this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and earth peace, goodwill towards men. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste 
and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told to them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marvelled at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. Do not be afraid. These words are one of the most common phrases in the Bible. The Christmas story in the New Testament, which we hear at this time of year, is no exception. We hear it from the angels appearing to the startled shepherds on the hillside. We hear it from the angel Gabriel as he visits the teenager Mary to tell her that she's going to have a baby. I don't know about you, but I think my first reaction to having an angel appear in front of me would be blind terror. That seems to be a perfectly normal reaction to me. But it's not just angels manifesting out of nowhere that we see leading to fear. In society today, as the pandemic continues throughout the course of this year, fear has been a constant companion. Fear of mixing in public places. Fear of catching the virus. Fear of losing loved ones or not being able to see them in hospitals or care homes. As we approach Christmas, we do so anxious about what the new year will bring. What does the Christmas story have to say to us in a climate of fear like this? God is wanting to bring each of us this message at Christmas. Do not be afraid. The good news of the angels to the shepherds is that God has become human in the person of the baby Jesus. God is not distant. God is not remote and indifferent. God is with us. He has taken humanity into himself. Jesus' presence with us is the perfect antidote to fear. Later on in the Bible, one of the writers says that perfect love casts out fear. Jesus' presence as the tiny, vulnerable, helpless baby demonstrates God's love for us. He loves us so much that he became one of us. He knows just what it's like to work, to grow, to struggle and to suffer. But how does that help us with our fear? How does God's presence with us deliver us from anxiety in the middle of Covid? Jesus is the antidote to fear because of who he is and what he was going to do. The angels call this baby Jesus the Messiah, the Lord. Jesus is God's special anointed king. Jesus is God himself with all of his authority. He may have looked weak and helpless in his mother's arms, but this child, the angels are telling us, is the creator of the world. When God comes to be with his people, then everything is different. This isn't just about putting on a brave face as we confront our fears. One of the worst things we could do is to pretend that our fears aren't real. We need more than just a grin and bear it mentality. Looking back at the Royal Navy over the past few decades, I love some of the names that their ships have been given to indicate the spirit by which the Navy seeks to live by. HMS Fearless, HMS Dauntless, HMS Unbending, HMS Illustrious. I would imagine for many of the sailors on board these ships facing enemies in battle, those names may have been more aspirational than realistic. Knowing that the name of your ship is HMS Dauntless provides some encouragement, I'm sure, but most of us need more than that. Jesus' identity as Messiah, the Lord, God in human flesh, helps us know that we are not alone. That the creator of the universe is here amongst us, in the messiness of our everyday lives. That he hasn't left us to deal with that mess on our own. He's come, he has acted, and he invites us to put our trust in him. 
As a man, Jesus acted to deliver us from our deepest fears. Jesus' death on the cross gives us the chance to be freed from our guilt and our shame. To be free from the fear that we'll be rejected by God because of our rejection of him. Jesus' death gives us the chance to trust. To trust in God's goodness, his desire to see us set free. To be forgiven. To be healed and to be cleansed. And Jesus' resurrection, his rising from death, meets head on our deepest fear. Our fear of death. Jesus conquered death itself, breaking its power and offering everyone who trusts in him the chance to conquer death too, to experience the life which only God can give. This Christmas, God is inviting us to trust, to trust him despite the uncertainty and fear we see around us, to trust in Jesus whose presence with us demonstrates God's love and and commitment to us, and whose death and resurrection meets our greatest fears and gives us amazing hope. We are not alone. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you for the wonderful message of hope that the Christmas story brings us. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you that he is the answer to our deepest fears and anxieties. We pray that you would bring us the joy, the peace and the comfort that we need this Christmas. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
The response to today's intercessions is, when I say, Jesus, Saviour, we say together, hear our prayer. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Let us pray to Jesus, our Saviour, Christ, born in a stable, give courage to all who are homeless. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, for whom the angels sang, give the song of the kingdom to all who weep. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, before whom the wise men knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Christ, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, Give the glory of your resurrection to all who rest in you. Jesus, Saviour, hear our prayer. Jesus, Saviour, child of Mary, you know us and you love us. You share our lives and you hear our prayer. Glory to you forever. Amen.
Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope that you've enjoyed our service together. Please do look out for our online Christmas Day service that will be published on YouTube and Facebook as well. Details of that will come up shortly on the screen. But we close our service now in prayer with the words of the blessing. So let's pray together. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always.